What's happening everyone, it's your boy Hardcorn, and we're back today with a very special video. And today we're going to talk about this game's weapons, their various categories, and how to use them to the best of your ability. What I want to start off with is a series of weapons that every character has. Every single character is going to get one of these when they release. They're called the Momochi weapons. These are weapons that every character gets whenever they get added in. They have a signature weapon, and they have the Momochi weapon. All the Momochi weapons have the same effect. It's each time a critical hit is dealt to an enemy, they have defense down buff placed onto them, and it stacks five times. Obviously, when you increase the skill level, the percentage goes up. So on this one, it's 4-5, and it does 7%, so you're going to have a 35% defense down every time you crit someone. And their active is always the same, too. It increases their critical hit rate by a percent for 12 seconds, cost 6. They're very simple effects, but it makes for a very strong weapon. Because with certain characters, these weapons are much better than their signature weapon. Someone like Shirinui though, it's not the hottest thing on the market, but it's, it's pretty much better than what her uh, signature weapon actually is. In fact, she has two package weapons that are better, but we'll get to those later on. When running a Momochi weapon, you have to think about, you know, what this character does. Shirinui is the master of AoE effects, and, they, and these AoE effects usually hit one to four times. So let's take a look at her skills. So Getsuin hits four times, which means if each one of those hits crits, that's four stacks applied. Shinen Shinsoku, however you pronounce it, this one hits a lot, and each, and each one of those hits can crit, which means every time you can apply a lot of stacks of defense down. That's, an, that's a thing I didn't mention either, is that those Momochi weapons, if a damage over time effect critted, or one of those spears in Shinen Shinsoku, if it critted, that's a defense down stack. Anything that crits is a stack that applies defense down. Yugen Goku, it can apply two stacks of defense down. Rondo, that's two stacks. Anything that does it will just be able to just decrease defense across the board. It makes it a very strong weapon in the right hands. And then on Shirinui's basic attack, it's not very fast, but it can hit a lot of enemies at once. So if it crits, it can smack a whole bunch of enemies and apply a stack of defense down onto them really easily. And then on a finisher for this, on a basic attack, it creates that you know river of spears that, hit, that hits for like four or five times. Each one of those are changes to crit, which is very good when you want to apply a lot of stacks of defense down with a Momochi weapon. Sadly, Shirinui is not the best user of this. Then we'll compare it to something like Coctus, her signature weapon. It of course has a passive and an active, and it's not very good. This one, this signature weapon is a kind of a crapper. It only gives a, you know, defense buff when the particles are full, and then its active is a sort of knock-up move, like that uh, green melee supporter that gives a uh, melee attack boost up. That one, it knocks him up into the air, and at 5-5 five, five, this will do like a thousand damage. It's essentially like a Kaoru, but Unlike Kaoru, this Kaoru attacks all the enemies on the screen. This is in the area, which means they have to be within like 3 or 4 me meters of Shirinui in order for this to work. And that's not good at all. You don't ever want to use this. This passive also means that when you... while the particles are fully charged. You can't use your ultimate because if you use it, you'll lose the 26.3% defense up. It's kind of annoying, and if you use the active skill, you lose that buff too. It's kind of not self-serving, it doesn't serve to enhance her as a character. It's pretty much just a relic of a past time when she first got added in. Now let's look, go look at a character who really can benefit from the Momoshi weapons themselves. Someone who can take advantage of this very well is Aseroth. Of course, I haven't used this very much, but I understand that it's going to be ve it's very strong on her if I had more skill levels in general, because it allows her to have a ton of critical hits across the board on every single enemy on the screen, especially with something like Serpent Blaze, because that has a high critical damage, not critical damage, a critical chance up. So if one if one of the snakes is facing forward and it hits first and it crits then that means you can apply a defense down buff. You're going to probably apply it four times if all four of them crit. 
that's 16% uh, defense down. Not only counting the fact that she can also keep firing her basic attack, which pierces through enemies and it crits. That's another stack of it applied. If you raise the base critical rate higher on a character, like you get their skill level for a critical hit rate up to 25, they'll crit like every one in three hits at that point. So that's very good in general just to you know have around and really just apply a whole bunch of defense down to an entire group of enemies. And that counts as a visible debuff too. Like if you hit them with that stack and it shows above their health bar that little uh, red shield, which then it synergizes with someone like Yamato Suzune, debuffed enemies, you do 40% more damage. And I've said, I know I've said it before, but it's one of my favorite play styles is to use uh, debuffs everywhere because it makes enemies super weak and, that, and it makes that playstyle really strong too. Felicia, Felicia, bless her heart, she can play that extremely well. This is Felicia's, this is Felicia's signature weapon. It gives damage dealt to enemies with debuff at 15%. While it is nice, she can actually also apply several debuffs as well. I don't have her Momochi weapon, but Felicia is a character who greatly benefits from this because she has a time in an art that allows her to... There's Vampire's Blood. Vampire's Blood makes essentially her have Oboro's time in an art, which makes about every hit hit two or three times. So she attacks one time and it'll follow up with like two or three hits. Each hit has its own chance to crit. So with one swipe or a couple of swipes, she can instantly apply a ton of stacks. She can maximize her damage in a very small amount of time. And that's not counting something like Slaying Spree, where she throws a homing projectile at something that has a very high amount of damage, very fast, and has a lot of chances to crit due to how long it lasts on the enemy. Same thing with Rending Scythe. Like, you just leave it out there, and it'll just do a ton of damage and also crit all day. Sadly, you don't get the uh, damage buff on this, but if you're applying defense down, it essentially, null it essentially will come up to the same amount of damage as Shadow Blade, but you don't get the uh, throwing Destructo Disc or anything like that. You get the Boomerang. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the package weapons. Package weapons are for a very specific type of playstyle, so let's take a look at one. This is Oboros. It's the most recent one we've gotten. Most package weapons do a thing where they have increased skill damage by a percent amount. That's very strong because most of the time you're going to be using a lot of skills with some of these characters. Makes just general use with them very strong. Some of these weapons are the best weapons you can get for a character and other times they're just not. But they also do a certain thing with enhancing a single playstyle. Like right here, Tainted Blood Dragon, it allows Bloodstorm to spin two more times and also has a suction effect. That's really good because you no longer have to worry about, you know, running to that one stray enemy that's shooting at you from across the map. It will come to you. And the suction doesn't start either when it's, um, when a Boro is, when a Boro is spinning. It starts when she's doing her animation to prepare to spin. It sucks all the enemies up. So they thought of that. They made that playstyle inherently better when you have this weapon. It makes it desirable to have it. And not only that, Bloodstorm is doing two more spins. That's 38% more damage as well on each of those spins. It's, it's inherently stronger that way. It's the way to go if you want to play with Bloodstorm. But it's that one style though. I don't use Bloodstorm a lot. I like the uh, other I like the other skill she has where she throws those big sword blasts or whatever. I like that one a lot better, but it's still nice to have for that specific playstyle if I want to try it. Also, something to note is that these are very strong. These are very strong in attack and critical or attack and defense or what have you. Those stats, whatever these package weapons have, are good. Depends on the character though and how their scaling is. There's also another type of package weapon as well. These package weapons are for when you buy the character from the store or on early release or what have you. This is Astaroth's. It's very, very poor on her. Usually these, sort of, these weapons have the same effect on all of them whenever you get it. 
and they all come with very poor stats. They're essentially for you to have a UR weapon the moment you get the character and you don't have to spend any of your crystals on rolls or having to use tickets. Frankly sometimes if you have bad luck they're worth their weight but they instantly get outclassed by arena weapons and high level SR weapons. You want to dump these as soon as possible when you get better SRs or an arena weapon at high skill level. And the effect on them is higher damage for 8 seconds when the particles are fully charged and also the same effect happens at full particle charge is that they get a defense buff for 20 seconds. It's really bad because it doesn't even work the same way as something like Shizuru's or uh, Shiranui's because it happens one time and that's it. You don't get it again. At least from what I remember. Yeah, actually you do get it again. Like after you know, you've you spent your bar in some way. But you only get it at a full bar. And you don't have a weapon skill with this either, so you have to use your ultimate and then start over again. It's just not good. You use them just for pure stats and throw them away. For me though, I just have it for pure collection reasons. And frankly because Dead Heat's probably one of my favorite uh, costumes for we weapon skins for Astaroth, that's it. And also you can't get another of these, at least to my knowledge. Because if you try to buy the package again, you can't do it. So you just sit you just sit there with a 1-5 unless you're really gutsy and want to use a uh, nano machine on them. You really don't want to, there's, there's a lot better stuff out there to save for. Next we have seasonal weapons. Seasonal weapons appear, you know, at the changing of the seasons. We got summer, winter, Halloween, New Year's, all that sort of stuff. This is an example of like a Christmas weapon. Most of these Christmas weapons from what I remember have uh, increased damage against demons and damage taken down against the demons. So it's made for something like a demon buster build if you're running that sort of thing on that character. Frankly, they are very niche situations and it costs a lot to even get them for like barely any effect. You would need to invest a whole lot into them and they're a lot cheaper and stronger options to have. If you were lucky enough to get something like this and have it at high skill level, I mean more power to you. Because at 5-5 five, five of this, it is 30% more damage and then 30% less damage taken. It's a good weapon if you're really, really adamant on getting it built up. Next we have freebie weapons, the ones you get from events like the beast weapons. These weapons are not very good because they obviously grant stacks when you're using a skill the last 30 seconds and the duration refreshes on every time you get a stack. However, these stacks don't pay off very well because it has an active skill that costs 5 but it does you know, a certain amount of damage every time for every stack you had. They're really just nice stat sticks you can put in the secondary slot if you got a lot of them when they were you know, released. But these are the sort of freebie weapons that are not very good. They look cool though, I like putting them as uh, weapon skins. But uh, there are some other freebie weapons that are much much better. Like the snake weapons that we haven't gotten back very much. They are also a particle charge weapon which I can lead into both. I can lead into several things right here. Snake weapons are free weapons when they appear. They are particle chargers and they are very good weapons in general. They don't have the best stats in the world because they're free, but they are very good in your armory too because I think they're worth 5% a piece to your attack value. But anyways, each attack from these uh, snake weapons gives much higher particle charge and it caps out at I think 150%. So on a, on a character like Murasaki, this snake weapon is uh, you know not so hot. But on a character like Sue, or especially Sakura, but on Sue, it's a weapon that's very good to generate her particles and do a certain build that it can loop her uh, ultimate several times and stay invincible for a very long amount of time. Like the best users of snake weapons are characters who are, who are inherently fast, have multi-hit attacks somewhere, can move quickly, and have some way to spend the meter very fast. Now the thing is too, with all this particle charge you gain so quickly, it has a, the ability to, you know, spend it just as fast. This is a, it costs six orbs to use, but it does a very heat, it does a huge stream of, you know, just toxins that throws it forward. There's a huge amount of damage and it scales off of you. 
Sakura users usually like this uh, weapon because it generates particles all day. You can keep spinning, generate as much particles as possible, and constantly keep ulting to not only freeze the clock, but also use, her, use this uh, weapon skill all the time. I, don't, I think they've only run snake weapons twice, and I barely got the this one the other time. And the second time had Sue in it. I didn't have her at the time and I didn't understand her very well. But I regret it because now I'm stuck looking at this snake weapon and wondering what could have been. Oh, and another thing. These weapons, these snake weapons, uh, those sort of builds like those, those super speedy Sakura ones, they require these weapons to be at max. You can't have anything less. The summer weapons, though, are also another one that got a particle charge on them. Of course, Asagi has their own snake weapons, so they get, they managed to give, uh, during summertime, they gave everybody who didn't have their snake weapon immediately their own. It's pretty good if you have a particle charge build you're working towards, because not only do you need the particle charge weapons, you need the particle charge supporters, like the uh, limited Ingrid we got when she first released, and a few more particle charge supporters, the one that increase on hit, all that other stuff. There's a whole bunch you need to make it work. It's a niche build, but it's worthwhile to do. And particle chargers, you know, they'll come by every once in a while. But unless you've been playing for a long time, it's not really going to work out. That's really all I have to say about that. those sort of weapons, because they have one play style that we understand, and not a lot of support. These weapons, though, are the, uh, you know, for the three starter girls. And they are... They're, they're pretty, they have a niche effect, like right here it says Normal attack damage against snared enemies by 15% Normal attack deals 24% damage against random enemy This secondary part is where the strength actually comes in, but the stats are very poor It reeks of day one, because it is It's a day, it's one of the first weapons you could ever get in the gacha But this actually works like a, the the Kanazuki Sora supporter, I forget what her name is, but every time you activate a skill, it deals like a 150% damage to a random enemy. That's a fun skill to use, and I've used it a couple of times in time attack. But for someone like Sa uh, for someone like Asagi, who actually has very quick hits, each time she swings, she deals uh, essentially another. I, I like to call them echoes, as a term from Grand Blue Fantasy, where you hit an enemy, and then a secondary hit comes up and does a percentage and does a percentage of that first hit as bonus damage. Sadly, these uh, weapons haven't seen much fruition or light at all. I think they're actually very rare in the first place. Well, now they're much more rare because, well, the pool is so diluted we have so many characters now. Then we have the arena weapons. They're generally everybody's number one source of getting a UR weapon without going to the gacha. It's really hard to get those gacha weapons to 5-5, like I know I showed earlier, I have two weapons at 4-5 for Shiranui. That's pure luck right there. You get these mostly for the fact that they're a cheap UR you can easily get uh, skill levels for. Also, if you're doing PvP, they have specific effects that you want to use, mitigate how much you're getting your ass kicked in Arena. Like, you need these in like your main slot for every single one of your Arena characters, because it's just more damage, and also, you know, some of these have decreased debuffs, and this one has decreased critical rate of incoming attacks. I forget what the other one is, the red ones. They're generally pretty solid stuff. I have several characters that have their, uh, you know, arena weapons. Like, I've just never gotten drops for them outside of the uh, specific banner that they started out on when they first arrived in the game. Which, by the way, is probably one of the best ways to get items for uh, specific characters. And now we're going to get to the real meat of the game, or at least what I call the meat, the SR weapons. They have a large line of varied effects, and some of these series have, you know, a continuing idea throughout them. It's fun to predict what you can uh, figure out what the SR weapons are going to be when they do those character showcases uh, beforehand. But the most notable thing about SR weapons is that they have one specific effect, and they do it in sh extremely well. Like, we'll take this one for example. These sort of uh, Hindi series ones do uh, more damage to uh, specific things like humans or demons. So when you see a certain type like this, or it's as a name like this, you can predict that it's probably going to do more damage to humans. 
Well, there I ended up correcting myself because this one does more damage to demons. But it is still the same kind of design, same sort of thing. And it's very good at killing demons. It's, it's specifically just doing that. Some of them just flat out raise critical hit rate. And that's good on its own right. Some characters like, like to crit a lot. And if you're running a... Well, if you're using a SR weapon as a main, you can't use a Momochi weapon. But the idea of critting a whole lot is still there. You can do a lot of damage this way. They usually have a really wide variety, and they're generally a pretty good weapon for the most part. Like when they run a package deal, like the, they have the package weapons that I talked about earlier, they also have a secondary version that uh, always deals bonus damage to super armor. And frankly, these are just a weapon skins. Uh, you'll be do if you're at a certain point when you're building your characters that they will deal so much damage that bonus damage to super armor is redundant. But some of them have very niche effects, like uh, Sakura's right here, Lionheart. It uh, has a chance to make her invincible. That's actually uh, in very strong, but you have to kill the enemy in the first place. And when they're so bulky, they take forever to die. It's a, uh, it's almost ren rendered a uh, redundant. But most of the time, these SR weapons are for doing a certain thing and doing it really well. Like, I will take Companion Hand. Well, I think that's Sue's version. Companion Claw is the one that does uh, increased critical damage, and Blue Light Saber is uh, for Ingrid to do more critical damage. Like, if you want to do a whole bunch of damage as these specific characters, you can do it. They'll blow up anything in their path, but you have to put in the effort, the time, and especially the resources to make them the uh, comparable to UR weapons. There is debate, though, on, you know, how much how much worthwhile it is to raise an SR weapon to plus 15 versus something like a UR weapon to plus 15. The stats will be of course different, but the effects may uh, outweigh another. This is especially an argument between uh, Ingrid's, with how Ingrid has an inherently high natural base attack, so you can really take advantage of blue lightsaber and do all that and blow things up pretty easily. But SR weapons in general are just, they're very good to have around. And also, when they're at 5-5, they're stronger than a uh, UR weapon at skill level 1 in the sub slot. So that's why sometimes when you're starting out, you know, try to get as many SR weapons as you can for this character to 5-5. Because if you don't get a UR weapon in that time, at least you'll have some sort of thing in your stats that will give something better. It'll be able to hit harder than just equipping an N or an R weapon at all. But if you uh, if you really like challenging yourself and using unconventional tactics, SR weapons really are the thing that make up when you don't have UR weapons. Because when they have those generalist things like plus damage to humans, demons, or machines, those, uh, those will make up for your lack of stats somewhere. And it's generally very good. You can do a lot of stuff with those sort of things. And don't think because like, oh, I got a UR weapon, they're, uh, they're gonna go away. They don't. People who, uh, you know, take on high level content will use these because they're so strong. Because they're just so effective against simple things. Like you go to floor 75 in the tower, it's all demons. You bring something like Shirinui's Vaj Receptor. That's that right there is 80% more damage to demons. It may be an SR, it may be something I had to get a plus 7 to, but it's still doing a ton of damage. And it would be better than having a plus a skill level 1 UR weapon that's not going to be doing crap against them. Because, you know, when you get up to those high level content, you need all the help you can get. The SRs are also home to these weapons. These, uh, the Sanguine Spiral series, they, uh, their life steal on every single hit dealt with the skill. So if you have characters that are dealing huge amounts of damage with them, you can heal a lot. Especially with characters like Yukikaze and Sakura. Sakura has her spins and her basic attack. Yeah, she has her spin that, he that hits a ton of times and she can heal a lot off of it. Ryan also heals and this skill, this weapon skill also heals. So she can just sit there all day and just tank 
everything possible because she'll just heal it right back up. You're also still maining an SR weapon, which is why you need to probably enchain it to a certain point. But other than that, it's it's generally just really good. They're really good weapons. And sadly, only the three main characters that you start off playing the game with get them. But with some of how some of the characters, as time has went on, have very strong skills and scaling with them. Having a skill, having a weapon like this, uh, would just be entirely broken on them. You never defeat them. Which is why they institute timers on some of these missions and also make everything very hard now. The most important thing I want to tell you guys is that whether it's a Momochi weapon, a signature weapon, a package weapon, particle charger, free weapon, you name it, they can all be pretty good in some sort of fashion, in some sort of zany, wacky build. But it requires you to understand the character you to have the supporters and the knowledge to execute this in your own way. Whenever someone goes up and says to me like about meta strategies, it's like, I can do them, but I sometimes like to do unconventional things and have a little fun with it. It's these unconventional builds and stylings that make these sort of games really fun. It requires you to also spend time with the characters. I have all of them. I can do anything I want and it expands the game to you know whole new dimensions when you have everything and can do whatever you want under the sun some people can't do that some people only have like one or three characters and they have to be very cautious on how to spend these sort of things and then you go out and see something that's like you know someone has a like a 5-5 five, five cock this or a 5-5 five, five ADW annihilator and just rips everything apart in like three hits it uh, creates an illusion that you can do it too, and you can't. It's very hard to do that sort of stuff. Those people also have a level of understanding about their characters, how that build's going to work, and how they planned it out in their head. And they also have the raw stats to accomplish those sort of humongous hits. You just can't do that sometimes. But really spending the time with the characters and learning how these weapons are going to interact with each other, you may figure out that your, that your style itself may not suit a Momochi weapon, or it may suit a Momochi weapon but not the signature one, or a seasonal, or a f the free weapons that we get, or it may require an SR of some sorts. The experimentation required is all on you. That's really what I want to get across, is that you take the time to learn about these things. You take the time to learn about these characters, you learn how to make the synergy, and you can do a ton of fun stuff with that sort of thing. Sadly, we do not have anybody who's gone out and just really ripped into the game and checked numerical values on how things are calculated, because I would love that. I would love it if someone would go out there and check, you know, what the, the frame data for all these characters are, how much... How is damage calculated? How is a buff calculated and all that sort of stuff? I'd love it. It would be a great addition to the game. It would really give that sort of numerical depth I've been looking for. But we don't have that yet. And you can just really figure out that in good faith, if you have good numbers, good skills, and good weapons, that together, you too can accomplish anything. And I'll leave it at that. Don't forget to do all that fun stuff like like, comment, rate, favorite, subscribe. I love it. You love to see me succeed and I love to see you guys being happy. So until next time, be good everybody.